Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about placental imaging. This is the fourth video in this video series with title of Velamentous Cord Insertion. The outline of this presentation include introduction, definition of velamentous cord insertion, the prevalence and risks, ultrasound findings, review of a teaching case, and final teaching points. At first, introduction. Early prenatal identification of velamentous insertion of the umbilical cord is a desirable clinical goal since these pregnancies are at greater risk for adverse prenatal outcome including FGR, preterm births, congenital anomalies, fetal distress, and fetal bleeding. Theories regarding the development of velamentous cord insertion include trophotropism means enlargement of the uterus may result in differential growth of the placenta toward the well vascularized fundus or an error in initial blastocyte attachment that orients the fetus a distance away from the decidua basalis rather than directly opposite it. The definition of velamentous cord insertion it also called a membranous cord insertion is when the umbilical cord inserts into the membranes rather than directly into the placental mass and the umbilicus vessels course through the membranes unprotected by the umbilical cord or Wharton jelly prevalence and risks in population-based series, it occurs in approximately 0.5 to 1.5% of singleton births and 6% of twins. It's more prevalent in monochorionic twins, particularly in a smaller twin of a monochorionic pair, and it's associated with birth weight discordance. In singleton versus two field increased risk for placental abruption, SGN neonate, and prenatal deaths were reported. About 7% of fetal deaths prior to 24 weeks gestation is related to velamentous cord insertion. The increased risk for placenta previa, and it's also the most common precursor of vasa previa. Care should be taken at delivery to avoid avulsing the umbilical cord when delivering the placenta, as velamentous insertion is associated with a greater than tenfold increase in need for manual placental extraction. Ultrasound findings Ultrasound identification of the placental cord insertion site does not require additional skills, but it should be performed in a systematic fashion in order to be useful for screening velamentous insertion. However, as expected for any fetal, placental, or umbilical cord anomaly which is not obvious, routine non-targeted ultrasound examination often fails to detect velamentous insertion in utero as has been demonstrated in several large retrospective studies. Once placental location is determined, attempts to image the placental cord insertion should be undertaken by searching the fetal surface of the placenta with high-resolution grayscale ultrasound until the umbilical cord is identified. Care should be taken not to mistake true insertion site with loops of the umbilical cord overlying the placental surface by demonstrating the entry of main branches of umbilical vessels into the chorionic plate with color follow imaging. However, even though the umbilical cord increases in size with advancing gestation, a theoretically should be progressively easier to identify with color Doppler ultrasound, this proved not to be true later in pregnancy as visualization of the placental cord insertion becomes more difficult in the third trimester, especially in cases with posterior placenta, as we can see in this clip. So, in pregnancies with posterior placenta, gentle manipulation of the fetus through the maternal abdomen allowed proper placental surface visualization in most cases. If this maneuver proved unsuccessful, the woman should be 
placed in lateral position to produce acoustic window and then the placental surface is imaged as before. As we can see in this clip with the woman in lateral position. According to the ultrasound finding, the placental cord insertion site can be classified as normal if the umbilical cord inserted on the substance of the placental mass, marginal, also known as a battledore placenta, means cord insertion less than 2 cm from the placental edge. Marginal cord insertion may confer a small increase in the risk for adverse pregnancy outcomes such as placental abruption, placenta previa, and small for gestational age, but not prenatal deaths. And finally, another finding is velamentous insertion, means insertion of the umbilical cord on the chorioamniotic membranes away from the placental mass. In these cases, the relationship between the velamentous vessels and the internal cervical os should be established transabdominally. If insufficient transabdominal image quality was obtained, transvaginal ultrasound should be performed to search the lower uterine segment with color follow imaging and rule out wasa previa. It can sometimes appear to look like a mangrove tree with a trunk splitting into multiple root stems well above the surface of the ground. As you can see in this clip, the insertion of the umbilical cord trunk outside the placental mass and we have multiple branching of the umbilical cord outside the placental mass. In the case of a velamentous insertion, the umbilicus splits into multiple unprotected fetal vessels outside the placental surface. This image shows macroscopic finding of the cord and the placenta from the patient following delivery, which a velamentous insertion was identified with multiple separating vessels. The use of 3D ultrasound in determining the placental core insertion site is also time-consuming and therefore impractical for routine screening purposes. This panoramic surface render views in two different second trimester pregnancies shows the fetus, the umbilical cord, and the placenta. Multiplanar views and the corresponding surface rendered ultrasound image of the placental cord insertion. Note the poor definition in differentiating between the placenta and uterine wall. Now, we can review here a teaching case which helps us in the approach to velamentous cord insertion. A 27-year-old preemie gravida woman with a gestational age of 22 weeks based on the last menstrual period who presented for sonographic evaluation with an indication of a small fetal size according to the expected due date. At transabdominal approach, a linear structure indicative of a possible vessel in the area of the internal os was filmed. Use of color Doppler confirmed that the structure was a vessel. However, the origin of the vessel was still known. Spectral Doppler confirmed that the vessel was of fetal origin, and further inspection of the area showed that the placenta was not implanted in the lower uterine segment. Transvaginal approach indicated that the vessel lie within less than one centimeter of the internal os. To determine the source of the fetal vessel, the uterus was carefully interrogated and a placental mass was noted in the fundus. New additional placental tissue was identified, ruling out the possibility of a succinctuate low placenta. A sagittal image of the placenta appeared to show a normal placental cord insertion. However, a right coronal plane showed what could be either a battle lore or marginal cord insertion. 
because the examination had already identified the Vasa previa and rule out a placenta, an attempt was made to visualize a mangrove sign. The sagittal right lateral image shows aberrant filamentous cord insertion. The yellow arrow points to insertion into the membranes. The green arrow points to a single fetal vessel that traveled through membranes inferiorly along the posterior uterine wall to the lower uterine segment. The cord insertion is noted in the transverse oblique view. Another one, the yellow arrow points to insertion into membranes. The green arrow points to a single fetal vessel that travels through membranes inferiorly along the posterior uterine wall to the lower uterine segment. And the white arrow points to vessels that travel through membranes from insertion to placental mass. Cord insertion images have been rotated 90 degrees to better appreciate the mangrove sign. The pink arrows point to the trunk or umbilical cord. The yellow arrows point to the insertion into membranes and the green arrows point to the roots which are the separated fetal vessels. Now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. Velamentous insertion of the umbilical cord can reliably be detected prenatally and color Doppler ultrasound can efficiently assist in this task. Visualization of the placental cord insertion site can be easily achieved and could be incorporated into the protocol of the second trimester normally scan. This policy will not result in prolongation of the allotted time for scanning and has the potential of identifying a significant number of pregnancies at risk for obstetric complications. If the placental cord insertion site is not identified initially, every effort to rule out filamentous insertion and wasa previa should be undertaken. The new 3D ultrasound technology is not a useful tool for routine evaluation of the placental cord insertion site. Conversely, grayscale ultrasound with the adjuncting use of color Doppler imaging is accurate in identifying the placental cord insertion site. Therefore, this should be the technique of choice for the screening of filamentous insertion in utero. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.